Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got a great topic today, Miller Fisher syndrome. When we're going to teach everything under nine minutes, so we know how important your time is it. And so uh, we're going to have uh, all the facts under nine minutes for you to review, okay? Again, my name is Premier Charyat. I'm a physician, I'm a program director, internal medicine residency program, transitional residency program. I teach medical students and medical residents. I'm also director of research and I'm an assistant professor of medicine to major medical schools in the United States. So let's look at it. What is the definition of Miller Vision Syndrome? It's a rare acquired disease related to Guillain-Barre Syndrome, okay? So again, rare acquired disease related to Guillain-Barre Syndrome. What are the characterization? You got abnormal muscle coordination, paralysis of thigh muscles, and absence of the tendon reflexes. So epidemiology, if you look at it, again, it's rare, affecting one to two people per million each year in the most part of the world, and it's more common in East Asia. Children can be seen both in children and the adults, more common in men, and the average age of onset is like 45 years. So what is the pathophysiology? Uh, miller fisher syndrome is occurring several days up to four weeks after infected. So there's this prodromal infections, like uh, mainly you have to worry about diarrhea syndrome, then you have Campylobacter, but some other infections like H influenza, respiratory infection also cause. And what happens is you get antibodies against the bacteria, viral infection, cross react and attack the nerves. The site of the attack may be the myelin sheath, which is insulated and protect the nerve fibers of the axon themselves. So the principal autobody directed against the molecule called gangliocyte GQ1B. So remember, GQ1B, okay? So we got a nice picture. The first two is the regular Guillain-Barre syndrome. The last one, the Miller fission, the antibodies against a GQ, a principal autoantibody, GQ1B, okay? That's a ganglioside antibody. What are the signs symptoms? Define three defining features. Ophthalmoplegia, eye muscles weakness, resulting in impaired eye movements and uh, consequent double vision, ataxia, incoordination of the limbs, you got air reflexia, absence of tendon reflexes, and in some patients have weakness of the face, tongue, and swallowing muscles. Well, others develop weakness of the limbs, breathing, and muscle, and you can have GBS, uh, Miller Fission syndrome, overlap syndrome can have it. So how do you diagnose it? Clinical diagnosis, okay, we need high index of suspicion. Antibodies against gangliocyte GQ1B. Always remember, gangliocyte is a very important GQ1B. Nerve conduction test, EMG, um, the tests of the motor nerves are usually normal, but the sensory nerve action potential can are absent. There are abnormalities of the sensory nerves produced the tendon reflexes. So again, our antibody markers you have to check, and the antibodies of gangliocyte GQ1B. Again, gangliocyte GQ1B. Let's look at the sensitivity and specificity. Um, it's 42 percent sensitivity and 76 percent specificity. Positive likelihood ratio is 1.75 and the negative likelihood ratio is 0 0.63. So CSF analysis uh, is the mainly used to rule out the causes of weakness other than the GBS. The classic finding GBS, you have the albuminocytological dissociation that is like the combination of elevated CSF protein level and you get a normal CSF cell count. Remember that. So if you look at the electrophysiological study, the tests for motor nerves are usually normal, okay? Remember that motor part is normal, the sensory nerve action potential are absent, or abnormalities in the sensory nerve which produce the tendon reflexes are, okay? So electrophysiological studies, if you look at the sensitivity and specificity, is pretty high. So 81% sensitive and specificity is like 94%. So the huge positive likelihood ratio. So if you have electrophysiological studies, the likelihood ratio is 13.5, so 30 to 40 percent high odds. Remember that, okay? So anytime you have a, such a high positive likelihood ratio, if I'm writing a question about uh, this study, I definitely put the electrophysiological study finding there. The treatment, most patients recover within six months. The average recovery time is like eight to 12 weeks, and then intravenous immunoglobulin, you can give plasma pheresis. Um, thank you so much for watching our presentation today. We'll be back with another presentation. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.